Hello and welcome to the second version of me slowly and amateurishly explaining logic games. Um, I'm doing this because it helps me learn uh, the logic games better um, by explaining the process. You know, after I've, I've done one and, and failed or didn't do as well as I'd hoped, I do it a second time and I usually am much better the second time. And then consolidating my second run through with this video explanation um, has really helped me kind of understand what to be looking for and how to be thinking through these games. Um, so let's jump into, um, this is from a, a basic ordering challenge set and it's two games. Um, and we obviously know the type already, it's going to be basic ordering. Um, and uh, there, I managed to get all the answers right on my first time through, but I was, you know, a couple minutes, I want to say about two minutes over time. Of course, the entire theory of logic games is that if you have enough time, you're going to get them all right, because you can just like brute force everything. Um, but I need, I need to shave time off of some of these harder uh, sets. So let's jump into, this is called the Seven Trains game. So if you, I'm not going to show the answers or, just, or the, the prompt or anything. Um, so if you're looking at this video, you've either already have the prompt or you can search it up. So this is the Seven Trains game. And it tells us that exactly seven different trains, Quigley, Rockville, Sunnydale, Tilbury, Victoria, Wooster, and York, arrive at a station on Saturday. The following conditions govern their arrivals, and the first rule is that the trains arrive one at a time. So if we didn't already know this was a basic ordering game, then we definitely do now. So let's start drawing out our master game board. Now one of the things that I have been trying to get better at is to set up my master game board and then leave it untouched. Don't do, don't overdo the master game board. And then also don't use the master game board at all once you've like set it up. Cause I found that sometimes I'm going back and I'll make a mark on my master game board for a question and then I'll look back and not like on a different question and not be sure exactly what that is. Um, so I'm gonna try and leave my master game board as pure as possible. And then also I need to do a better job of referencing the master game board, like especially like when I'm comparing rules, for example, um, or comparing answers to rules. I got into the habit of looking at an answer and then looking at the rule in a written form as opposed to looking at the answer and comparing it to my master diagram, which have the rules in them. Um, so let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we know our players are Q, R, S, T, V, W, and Y. So the first rule, trains arrive one at a time, good. Uh, second rule, either York or Wooster arrives fourth. So we either have York or Wooster fourth. Because it, we're down to two options, I go ahead and throw that in the diagram there. Third rule, the Sunnydale arrives at some time after Wooster, but before York. So we're going to have this little relationship. where Sunnydale arrives after Wooster, but before York. But we don't know, you know how many things come between them. Next rule, we're told that both the Tilbury and the Victoria arrive after the Rockville. As such, so we don't know anything about the relationship between these elements and these elements. And so far, we don't know about the relationship between T and V until the very last rule. 
The Tilbury does not arrive next after the Victoria, and nor does the Victoria arrive next after the Tilbury. And this is just kind of a weirdly worded way of saying that T and V are not adjacent. So we do that by, this is our chunk, and we draw the handle showing that it can go either TV or VT, and we draw a slash through it. Um, and so now we can start making our inferences. So we can go ahead and start, let's start making inferences with the WSYs. So we know that obviously S cannot come last, W cannot come last. We know that W cannot go sixth. It could theoretically go there. And then let's see, we know that S can't go first because you need W before it. We know that Y cannot go first, nor can it go second because Y needs to have two elements behind it. And I think that's as much as we can do right there for that right now. Let's go ahead and draw in some stuff for here. So we know that R cannot come last. We also know that R cannot go six because R has at least two elements coming after. Now here, what about R and five? We can't have R and five because if R is in five, then six and seven are necessar necessarily TV, but TV can't be adjacent. So this is an important inference on this game to make up front because now we know. So we can go ahead and draw a cloud there that R has to come somewhere over there. So we know that, but if R is here, we also know that TV can't be in two and three. So, oh, but hang on, let me, before we get there. Um, um, let's just hold this right now. The other inferences that we're gonna make here uh, are going to um, be in the form of frames. So this is like all that I think is needed for the master, which is as long as you can, as long as you realize that your R has to come over there. Um, and then here, this is like a, a point where you can, where you're gonna wanna frame. And the reason for that is that you have this rule here. And if you have a Y here, for example, and you know that R has to come over here, then you know what these three elements have to be. They have to be R, W, S, because the W and S have to proceed Y. So when we talk about framing, we talk about divisions with consequences. So having a Y there as a frame has consequences. So let's draw out that frame. So if we have a Y here, oh, and it's also worth mentioning, uh, Q is our floater. Uh, Q was not mentioned in any rules. So uh, we go ahead and leave that there. So with Y here, we now know that we have an R and a WS like that. W preceding S. And so that leaves over here, Q, T, and V. Now obviously T and V can't be adjacent, which means they have to be in five and seven respectively and Q and six. And so this is, this is like a really good frame to have because it, it fills one, two, three, four of our seven elements. 
And also this is very restricted here because you can only have a couple of combinations here. If you want at this point, you can like just write them out real quick. So you can have R W S, you can have W R S, you can have W S and R. Let's go ahead and draw out our other frame where we have Y and four. Or sorry, we have W in four. So now if we have a W in four, we know that we have an SY over here. And we know that we have to have either a T or a V over here. Now, how do we know that? Well, we already know from our master that we have an R somewhere over here. And if R has to precede T and V, then T and V would have to go here or here if we you know, assume that they're gonna be on the left side, but that can't work because they're adjacent. So we know that whatever, so we know that since R has to precede T and V, but if R precedes T and V over here, then they're adjacent. So we know that you can't have both of them over there. So we have S, Y, T, V. And that means that we have R, Q, T and V over here. And that's about as good as we can get for our frame here. You could, like, there's no point in kind of drawing out. Um, I mean, you could write here that you know that T or V can't be there, so it's going to be there. Um, but other than that, that's like as clean as that frame is going to be. Um, my first time through this game, I didn't frame like this. And I think that if I had framed this by recognizing, the, the key is recognizing that when you put something in four, it limits like the, the T and V because T and V can't be adjacent. So you know that T and V can't be in two, three, respectively, one, two, five, six, or six, seven. So like really like a lot, like when you fix this position and locked up, which we do with the YW rule, then it really like forces elements into certain spots, the T and V, because of that adjacent rule. Um, and if I had recognized that on my initial time through, then I think, and then set up those frames, I think I would have saved a lot of time. Let's go ahead and get through the questions. Um, 13 uh, is asking about the possible orders. And we have R, T, V, W, S, Y, Q. R, W, Q, Y, T, S, V. R, T, Q, Y, oh, C is R, T, Q, W, S, Y, V, D is Q, R, W, S, V, Y, T, and E is T, R, Q, W, S, Y, V. So again, the first approach to this type of one is which of the following could be the order. So we go through our rules and we double check them against the answers. Um, and so let's start, so our, you know, our first rule 
it was y, w, and 4. So now we look for one where there's neither a y or a w and 4. Bam, d is eliminated. Uh, the next rule is that we have this kind of y or w, s, y relationship. So we'll see which ones of these. So we have w, s, y, that's good. w, y, s, that's bad. That's eliminated. And uh, w, s, y, w, s, y, okay. Next we have R before T and V. R, T, V, R, T, V, T, R, so that's gone. And then our next rule is the adjacency rule, so T and V can't be next to each other. R, T, V, so C is our answer. 14 is our conditional. So it says that if W arrives sometime before R, how many different orders are there in which the seven trains could arrive? So if you framed this, this question becomes very quick. And if you didn't frame it, then this question is like kind of forcing you to frame it. And it's going to take a lot more time though, because you're looking at, wow, there could be five, six, seven, eight possibilities, because that's what these answers are. So four possible, five possible, six possible, seven or eight possible. Um, but here, so we're told that if W is a four R, so let's look at our frame. This, this is the frame that we have to work in, right? Because if W is four, then it can't come before R. So this is our frame. And we're told, so, and then we know that it can't be the W R W S frame. The, it's one of these two. So now you look here, so this is one. So it could either be this with T Q V or this with V Q T. So there's two and the same thing here. It can be this with T Q V or this with V Q T. And because we framed it and then this limits it, we know right away that it's four and we don't have to draw anything else out. Let's look at 15. Which one of the following must be true? So this is where we, it's, you know, we're not giving the conditional, so we just compare the must be true to kind of what we know about the game. So option A is R is first, B is Q comes before S, and C is R comes before W, D is V comes before Y, and E is W comes before Y. Well, we already know that R doesn't have to be first, so that's not must be true. And then if we look here, Q comes before S. Q comes before S in this frame, but Q comes after S in that frame, so that doesn't work. Um, R comes before W, well, we've already shown in, in this frame that that doesn't have to be the case. V comes before Y. Well, we know that in this frame, V comes after Y. And so by process of elimination, we know that Y has to come, W has to come before Y. And that's if you look in both frames, W comes before Y. W comes before Y, confirming that. But the other ones were very easy to eliminate with the frames. 16. Which of the following could be true? So this is a could be true question instead of a must be true. So 
So option A is S is the next train to arrive after Q. So QS. B is R is the next train to arrive after S. So SR. C is R is the next train to arrive after T. D is the Q is the next train to arrive after S. And E is the Q is the next train to arrive after the W. But one of these is glaringly wrong because it has R coming after T. And so now we know that, so since one of these could be true, we're looking for one could be true, four of these must be false. So we cross-reference these combinations. Is there anywhere in our frame where we can have Q and S together? Nope, because in either frame, Q and S are split like around that uh, fourth slot. R comes after S. Well, that looks good. We have a frame here. Let's leave that for now. Again, D is eliminated for the same reason as A, because we know that Q and S are separated. And then W, Q. W and Q are... Ah, now here's where it gets tricky. We could theoretically have... Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I got confused for a second. No, because the, the only place that Q and W can line up is with W following Q, not Q following W. So B is our correct answer. 17. This is our conditional, so it's if exactly one train arrives after W, but before the York, which of the following could be true? So this is a conditional could be true. Um, and the options are S is sixth, T is sixth, R is third, S is second, and R is first. So again, we're looking for one could be true, which means four must be false. And as always with a conditional, we write out a new diagram here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this is this conditional actually gives you a little bit more information because we know that S has to come between W and Y. So this conditional isn't just giving us this chunk, it's giving us this chunk. And this chunk is very determinative because if we look at our frames, there's only two places this chunk can go. If Y is in fourth in our first frame, then we have S, W, which means R is first. And then we have the TV, Q, TV to make sure that those aren't adjacent. And if W is in fourth, then we're in the second frame with W, S, Y, T or V in seventh. And then we have the RQTV over here. RQ, so R before T slash V, and then Q as a possibility. So it, now we compare. So these are our two, these are the two places. If that, S can't be sixth, obviously, because Q and Y are sixth. T can't be sixth, obviously, because Q and Y are sixth. R can't be third, because if R goes third, then either T or V would precede it, which breaks the game. S can't be second, because S can't be in this frame before the W, and in this frame, it's fixed in the third position. 
and R is first. Now notice that this R in first doesn't have to be true. It's not a must true, you know, because if we have the WSY there, you could have QR in second and then TV in third, but it just R could be in first. And then finally, 18. If Q arrives at some time before the R, then the Wooster must arrive when? So if, if Q comes before R, now in this like this type of conditional like you, you know you might be prompted to like draw out and you know a new diagram but we already have our frames and there's only one frame where it's possible for Q to come before R and that would be this frame and this frame has the W fixed so you already know that if Q is before R then W has to be fixed in the fourth position So that is my run through slash explanation of the seven trains game. Hope it helps. I'm going to make a new video and do the, uh, the next basic ordering challenge set in a different video. So stay tuned.